Hello everyone, today, we are starting a new tutorial series on anesthesia breathing systems. This is the introduction to the series of presentation on anesthesia breathing system where we will be looking into what a breathing system is, its components and the functional classification of breathing system. In the next video, we will go in depth with Maple Sun Breathing Circuit. The breathing system is an assembly of components which connects the patient's airway to the anesthesia machine. This creates an artificial atmosphere, from and into which the patient breathes. All anesthesia breathing systems have two fundamental purposes. First, it delivers oxygen and anesthetic gases to the patient and secondly, it eliminates carbon dioxide either by washout with adequate fresh gas flow or by carbon dioxide absorption. The breathing system must perform certain important functions. Some of these are must-have while others are desirable. Essentially, the breathing system must efficiently transport gases from the machine to the alveoli at the desired concentration and in the shortest time possible. Secondly, it should effectively remove carbon dioxide. Thirdly, it should minimize apparatus dead space and maintain low resistance. In addition to these primary criteria, there are other desirable requirements laid out here for your reading pleasure. The diagram here shows a circle system, a type of breathing system used in modern anesthesia machine. It consists of fresh gas entry port that takes gases from the machine. A port to connect it to the patient's airway. A reservoir bag. It should be noted that some breathing system uses breathing tubes as a reservoir bag which we will see later. Inspiratory and expiratory breathing tubes. Adjustable pressure limiting valve or pop-off valve. Unidirectional valve and carbon dioxide absorber. In addition, the breathing system has connectors and adapters, filters, and humidification systems. However, all breathing systems are not similar in construct and does not have all the features mentioned here. Let's look into some of the components that are generally present on most of the breathing system starting with the reservoir bag. Reservoir bags are synthetic, latex or rubber-made ellipsoidal-shaped bags that come in varying sizes as shown in the diagram. A normal-size adult bag should hold a volume exceeding the patient's inspiratory capacity or about 30 milliliters per kilogram. Reservoir bag has several important functions. It protects the patient from excessive pressure buildup in the breathing system by accommodating the excess gas. It provides peak inspiratory flow as it serves as reservoir from which additional gas may be drawn should the respiratory demands of the patient exceed the gas flow from the machine. The bag also allows controlled or assisted ventilation by controlling the level of pressure inside it with the adjustable pressure limiting valve. And in a spontaneous breathing patient it serves as a visual or tactile monitoring for the breathing. The bag inflates and deflates with expiration and inspiration respectively. Breathing tubes are a hollow structure that serve as a conduit for breathing. The tube functions as a reservoir in certain systems and provides connection from one part of the system to another. They are rubber, plastic or silicone tubes and can be impregnated with silver to add antimicrobial effect. The corrugated build of the tube prevents kinking and increased flexibility. It may be side-by-side -side or coaxial. Side-by-side -side has two tubes that are arranged side-by-side, -side, one for inspiration and one for expiration. Coaxial arrangement has two tubes, one inside the other. The length is variable but the internal diameter is the same across all the breathing systems. For adults, 22 mm is used and for pediatrics, 15 mm internal diameter is used. 
They usually have internal volume of 400 to 500 milliliters per meter. The tube creates some resistance to gas flow of less than 1 millimeter of water per liter per min of flow. Because the breathing tubes are distensible, two important phenomena occur when using them. They are backlash and wasted ventilation. Backlash is seen during spontaneous breathing where breathing tubes tend to collapse during inspiration and bulge during expiration. This may cause rebreathing. Wasted ventilation is seen during controlled breathing. The tubes tend to bulge on positive pressure breath, that is inspiration, and return to a resting position on exhalation. This results in less volume entering the patient than the one leaving the reservoir bag or a ventilator. Adjustable pressure limiting valve, also called APL valve, expiratory valve, pressure relief valve, pop-off valve are spring-loaded devices that vents out gases when excess pressure builds up. They typically have three ports. Inlet, which brings in fresh gas flow. The patient port, which takes the gas to the patient and the exhaust port or the outlet, which vents out the excess gas to reduce the pressure buildup. The individual components of such a valve are also shown here. The working mechanism of APL valve is pretty straightforward. When the pressure in the system is low, the disc of the APL valve with the force from the spring prevents the gas from passing into the exhaust port. But when the excess pressure builds in the circuit, the spring and the disc is pushed thereby allowing the gases to vent through the exhaust port. We can control the pressure required to open the valve by manually tightening or loosening the control knob which is attached to the disc via the spring. During spontaneous breathing, the APL valve is kept fully open to prevent pressure buildup and allow all expired gases to exit the system. We then partially close it if we need to provide positive pressure ventilation so that the desired inspiratory pressure can be achieved. When this pressure is reached, the valve opens and excess gas is vented out during inspiration. The gas vented out of the exhaust port may be open to the atmosphere or scavenging system. During ventilator operation or mechanical ventilation, APL valve in the breathing system is either closed or isolated. The ventilator must contain a spill valve for venting excess gases into the scavenging system during the expiratory phase of the mechanical ventilation. The spill valve will be discussed in anesthesia ventilator video. Based on the presence and absence of reservoir, carbon dioxide absorber, rebreathing of expired gas, unidirectional valve and access to the atmosphere, the breathing system can be classified as open, semi-open, semi-closed and closed system. In an open system, anesthetic gases are delivered directly into the patient's airways where atmospheric air acts as diluent. Patient's airways have access to the atmosphere during both inspiration and expiration. Open breathing systems have no reservoir breathing bag, no functional rebreathing of exhaled gases, no tubing, and no valves and no neutralization of carbon dioxide. The open systems include insufflation and open drop anesthesia. The open drop anesthesia breathing system is no longer used in modern medicine but is of historical significance. The Schimmel Bush mask is one of the simplest forms of an anesthesia breathing system. This system secures gauze to a wired mask, and liquid volatile anesthetics like ether, Chloroform or halothane are dropped onto the gauze. As the patient inhales through the mask, air will pass through the gauze, vaporize the anesthetic liquid, and deliver high concentrations of anesthetic to the patient. The benefit of the system is the simplicity of setup and limited equipment. 
Insufflation breathing is a technique used to blow anesthetic gases through a mask across a patient's face without the mask being in direct contact with the patient. This breathing system is most commonly used with pediatric patients when placing a face mask directly on the child's face may be difficult or resisted by the child. In this system, especially if the gas flow is high enough, there is virtually no rebreathing of exhaled gases. In semi-open system, patient's respiratory system is open to the atmosphere both during inspiration and expiration through a reservoir and the breathing tubes that is open to the atmosphere. The atmospheric air either carries or dilutes the anesthetic agents. Semi-open breathing systems have a reservoir breathing bag. It has no functional rebreathing of exhaled gases and needs high fresh gas flows to prevent inhalation of exhaled carbon dioxide. There is no neutralization of carbon dioxide and no unidirectional valves. These include maple sun breathing systems which will be discussed in detail in the next video. In semi-closed system, Patient's respiratory system is completely closed to the atmosphere on inspiration but partly or fully open to the atmosphere on exhalation that allows carbon dioxide to be washed out. Semi-closed breathing systems have a reservoir breathing bag, partial rebreathing of exhaled gases, unidirectional valves, neutralization of carbon dioxide, and low fresh gas flows. These include circle systems with an APL valve that is at least partially open. The circle system used in modern anesthesia machine will have a separate video too. In closed breathing systems, the patient's respiratory system has no access to the atmosphere both on inspiration or exhalation. It has a reservoir breathing bag, total rebreathing of exhaled gases, unidirectional valves, and neutralization of carbon dioxide. This includes circle systems with the APL valve closed. A rather simpler way of classifying breathing systems is according to the method used for carbon dioxide elimination as breathing system with carbon dioxide absorber and breathing system without carbon dioxide absorber. The table here shows the breathing system classified as such. The important systems are Maple Sun and Circle System and will be thoroughly presented in upcoming videos.